you know, lately it's been a lot of debate going on about a lot of things, but primarily one of the things that got my attention is debate about passports. There's been a lot of debate about black men getting passports and black men going to other places to find more feminine women and things of this nature. And you have two groups. You have the group that understands this, that they have to do this to find a woman that's worthwhile to even deal with. Then you have the opposite group that want to shame them for doing this. We call them the dick police, the passport police, whatever you want to call them. It's two brothers in particular that I'm very surprised about the lane that they've taken in this. One of them even tried to use the Bible in a very wicked way. He tried to use the Bible to shame these men and call all of them whoremongers. Well, I'll say this, and maybe a couple of them that are doing whoremongering, I know the majority of them are not doing whoremongering. The majority of them are trying to find feminine women, women that are worth being with. That's why they're leaving this wicked place. See, and if you don't know the Bible, they can get away with doing what they did because if you don't know, you don't know how to check them, but I do. See, I know what the book says about that. So if you're talking about the passport and passport gate 2019, what does the Bible say about it? Forget anybody else's opinion. What does the Bible say about it? We're going to look at our father, Abraham, okay? We know that our Abraham is our father. We know that we are the children of, of Israel. We are children of the Hebrews. And Abraham is like our great-grandfather. And he gave very specific instructions to his eldest servant concerning his son. But inside these instructions, you can see something very important, but you have to notice it. You have to look at it and see what he's saying. And we're going to relate that to today's time. If our father Abraham was living today, what would he tell us? We are his grandsons. What would he tell us about the land that we live in today? Let's break this down. This is Genesis chapter 24. And let's see about what Abraham told his servant. And we're going from there. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And Yah had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had. Put, I pray thee, thy hand under thy thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Elohim, by the, by the Elohim of heaven and the Elohim of earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Stop right there. He said, do not take a wife of the Canaanites who I dwell. So he dwelt with the Canaanites, which were known to be a very wicked people. And Canaan land at the time was a very wicked place. Keep that in mind. Four. But thou shalt go into my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. Stop right there and let's break that down. How can we translate that in today's times? Well, number one, he said, I don't want you to take a wife where I live at because where I live at is too wicked. Isn't that the same situation we're in right now? Living in this land, America. Isn't this place too wicked? 9.5 out of, the, out of 10 women that you run into are extremely wicked. And you cannot make a wife out of them. You cannot even exist with them. Isn't that the same thing? He said, but thou shalt go into my country and to my country and take a wife unto my son Isaac. So where can you brothers go today? Brothers are going to the Philippines. Brothers are going to Africa. Different parts of Africa. Brothers are going to Brazil. By the way, Brazil got more black people than anywhere else other than Africa. Most of our people went to Brazil in the slave trade. It's more of us there than here. Brothers are going to these various places trying to find what? A feminine woman. Unlike the daughters of the Canaanites or the daughters of America. Do you see that there? Let's keep reading. And the servant said unto him, Preadventure, the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I need bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou came? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. The Most High Elohim of heaven, which took me from my father's house, and from the land of my kindred, and which spoke unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And he shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from there. 
And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son hither again. He said, don't bring him back to this place, to this wicked place. Keep that in mind. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swear to him concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by the well of the water at the time of the evening. Even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Yah, Elohim of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of the water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass, that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. And let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out, whom was born to Bethel, son of Melchah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. All right, now we got to break that down. 16. It says, and the damsel was very fair to look upon. That means she was a very beautiful woman. She wasn't fat and disgusting like a lot of the women are in this land. And it says, a virgin, neither had any man known her. Brothers, what's your chance of finding a virgin in wicked Babylon. What's your chance of finding a virgin in this land? What is it? Extremely sim, almost zero percent. We know this. Okay? And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of the pitcher. And she said, Drink, my master. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. Stop right here. Do you see her attitude? He said, let me, I pray thee, drink a little water. And she said, drink of my master. She called this man master and didn't even know him. Do you see how submissive her attitude was to a man that she didn't even know? But what did he had to do? He had to go to another land to find a woman like this. Keep that in mind. Drink, my master. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand. And gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camel also until they have done drinking. So not only him, she's going to draw water from the camels also. Do you see her mindset? You see she has a very willing mindset, a very submissive mindset already. So you see how different she was from the daughters of Canaan or the daughters of America. And she hasted. And emptied her pitcher into the throne and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And a man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the Most High had made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took the golden earring of half a shekel weight, two braces for her hand and ten shekels of weight of gold and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee. Is there room in our father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethel, the son of Michal. And she bare unto Nahor. She said moreover unto him, We have both straw and provider enough and room to lodge in. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Most High. And he said, Blessed be the master Elohim of my master Abraham who have not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. And I being in the way, Yah led me to the house of my master's brother. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man, unto the well. 
And it came to pass when he saw the earring and braces upon the sister's hands, upon his sister's hands, and when he had, when he heard the words of Rebekah his sister, saying, Therefore spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, thou blessed of Yah, wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and the room for the camels. Okay, look at the whole attitude of the family here. The whole attitude of the family is very hospitable. They're very kind. Now, I've heard the stories from brothers that visited Brazil that when they met a girl from Brazil, she introduced them to the whole family and the whole family treat him very similar to what you're seeing right here. Now, what's your chances of being treated like this by the average Babylon family, American family here? Think about that. Think about it. And the man came into the house and he ungirded his camels and gave straw and provider for the camels and water to wash his feet and a man's feet that were with him. And there was set meat before him to eat. But he said, I will not eat until I have told my errand. And he said, speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. And Yah have blessed my master greatly. And he has become great. And he have given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men service and maid service and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old. And unto him have he given all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of Canaanites in whom I dwell. Once again, brothers, if our father Abraham was alive today, what would he tell us? He would say the same thing to us. He would say, Do not take a wife of the United States. Do not take a wife of America. Do not take a wife of this Babylonian place. He would say the same thing to where we dwell. But thou shalt go into my father's house and to my kindred and to my wife and to my son. He said, once again, go to my father's house, to my kindred and to my wife and to my son. That translates, you brothers have to go back to the motherland, back to certain places in Africa. Once again, back to certain places in Brazil. This is where you're going to have to go for the most part. And I said unto my master, pre the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, Yah before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way. And thou shalt take your wife for my son of my kindred and of my father's house. Then should I be clear from this my oath when thou hast come to my kindred. And if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. And I came this day unto the well and said, O Yah Elohim of my master Abraham, if now thou would do prosper my way which I go, Behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin come forth, once again, underline that word virgin, pay attention to that. He had to go to this place to find a what? A virgin. Because it's more likely to find it there than where he was at. Does that sound familiar? Come forth to draw water. And I said to her, give me, I pray thee, and with the water thy pitcher to drink. And she said to me, both drink thou, and I also will draw for thy camels and let the same be the woman whom Yah have appointed out of my master's son, out for my master's son. And before I had done speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with a pitcher on her shoulder and she went down unto the well and draw water. And I said unto her, let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank. And she made the camels drink also. Once again, she was very submissive, very in order to follow this man who she didn't even know. Okay? Pay attention to that kind of character. You're not going to find that character in this land where we're at, for the most part. You're not going to find it. You're going to have to go somewhere else to find that kind of character in a woman today. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethel, Nahor's son, whom Mechel bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and braces upon her hands. And I bowed down my head and worship Elohim, worship Yah, and bless Yah, Elohim of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother, daughter, unto his son. And now, if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me. 
and I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethel answered and said, The thing proceeded from Yah, we cannot speak unto thee, bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee, take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as Yah has spoken. Now once again, look at the men. The men there understood how things work. They understood, okay, if this righteous man want her, you, you go be with him, okay? It wasn't, she wouldn't wait until she was 30, 40, 50 year old to get married. No, she was getting married while she was a young virgin. Unlike the majority of women in this Babylonian country. Pay attention to that. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped Yah, bound himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth Jews of silver and Jews of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. And he gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink. He and the men that were with him and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning and said, send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, let the damsel abide with us a few days at the least ten after she shall go. And he said unto them, hinder me not, seeing that Yah has prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. He said, look, I got to go because this thing is done by Yah. All right. Yah wanted this thing to be so. And they said, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, will thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. Look at that. She said, I will go without hesitation. She didn't put up a fuss. She didn't fight. Okay. She didn't have an attitude. She said, no, I will go. But what did he have to do? He had to leave the place where he was at and go to another land to find a woman of this caliber, to find a woman with this mindset. Pay attention to that. And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of which, the, of which hate them, of which those that hate them. And we know that's exactly what Rebekah was going to do, being one of the mothers of the nation of Israel. And Rebekah arose, and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well near Hore, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening tide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she lifted off the camel. For she has said unto her servant, What man is that that walk in the field to meet us? And the servant has said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. Why? Why did she do that? She did that out of respect for him. She did that out of respect for this man. Once again, do you see her mindset? Her attitude, her caliber, her submissiveness compared to the women of Canaan or the women of Babylon who he had to get away from. Did you see that? And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother's tent and took Rebekah and she became his wife. And he loved her and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Okay. Isaac had something to look forward to because he got a virtuous woman that was young and was a virgin. But Abraham had to send his servant somewhere else to find a woman of that caliber. So I'm going to ask you this. We just read what the Bible had to say about that. Why is it men, shaming men, doing the same thing? Now I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of them are doing the same thing that Abraham told his servant to do. Go to somewhere else that's not as corrupted as this place to find a woman of this caliber, if they can. This is what brothers are doing. And you have men shaming them from this. It's the most ridiculous shit I ever heard. But that's what the Bible got to say about it. See, everybody else got their opinions and, and foolishness and all this other stuff. But the book will always let it be known what the truth is. You see that there? So we see what Eliezer had to do. And what Abraham told him to do to find him a woman. He had to leave the land of the Canaanites. And you brothers will have to do the same thing. A lot of you all. 
you have to leave the land of Babylon to find you a woman. You go into various places. Some of y'all going to Germany. Some of y'all going to Philippines, like I said. Some of y'all going to East Africa. Some of y'all going to different parts of Brazil. Okay? This is what y'all going to have to do, a lot of y'all, to find a good woman. Because this place is nothing but Sodom and Gomorrah. This place is extremely corrupted. And it's up for judgment by the Most High. Another thing, too, they say they want to shame men for going to other places and say men should save the community and stay here to find a woman. Well, what's the future of this place? What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Because this place is even worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. What happened to that? That's right. It got burned down. The most high burned it down to the ground. And guess what? It's going to be the same for this place. So how can you do that in this place for the most part? So how can you shame men? For doing what the Bible say to find a wife. See, we have to follow the old paths, not what some fool is saying. Okay? That's what the Bible says to do to find a wife. Go to a land that's not as wicked as the land that you're in. Well, I just want to say that real quick, man, because the foolishness from some of these men out here and trying to use the Bible to shame men in a corrupt manner and almost getting away with it. And if you don't know the book, you would let them get away with it. But see, I know the book where they can't get away with it. I know where to go. To rebuke that foolishness and that bullshit. But y'all brothers out there be encouraged. Y'all brothers that got the means to leave, to go to various places. May the most high bless you. May you find a virtuous woman. May she be a good woman to you. May you be a good man to her. And let me say this. Is it a couple men out there that's whoremongering? Of course it is. But they're trying to make it like every single man is whoremongering. And every man is being a pedophile. What kind of shit is that? That's not what's going on for the majority of the brothers. The majority of them are trying to find a virtuous woman. Trying to find something as close as they can get to a virtuous woman. And you're damn sure ain't going to find it here for the most part. You're not going to find it in the land of Babylon. Or like Abraham told his servant in the land of Canaan. You got to go somewhere else to find it. I hope y'all can see that and understand that. That's what the Bible says. So I'm going to get my take on this Passport Gate 2019 and let y'all know what the Bible really says about it. And hopefully this, this gets put to rest because there's a bunch of nonsense and foolishness going on. Sipping at an all-time high for men that didn't used to do this. I'm telling you, man, it's getting bad out there. It's getting real bad. We are the last of the Mohicans. We're the last of a dying breed, the real men are, man. They're standing up and really just doing what men do. Doing masculine things what men do and following the book. The damn with the opinion of some fool talking shit. Alright? Anyway, I hope y'all got something from that. Y'all willing, I'll see y'all next time. Shalom.